Liam and Jess listen to the song, Senorita, lately. How will they respond later in their daily lives? This afternoon, Liam is joyfully chilling around the lake with the sweet hook stuck in his head. Jess, on the other hand, is struggling with the midterm in the classroom. But she can't help thinking about the hook and of course, she's annoyed. Zach, our poor guy, has been seeing a shrink for almost a year. He tells the doctor he can't get the earworm out of his head. Every single day, all kinds of music keep replaying in his mind and nothing makes sense. The earworm wears him out. Another psychiatrist dispensed a prescription of haloperidol, but apparently, the earworm never leaves. When the doctor asks about his life, Zach mentions his heartbroken breakup a half year ago, and his hopeless academic performance. From this scenario, we can grasp the so-called earworm. For Liam, his earworm helps him remember the hook, so it can be seen as a positive earworm conductive to learning and memory. For Jess, she has been on tenterhooks for a whole midterm week. The more anxious she is, the more serious the earworm becomes and even distracts her attention during exams. In Zach's case, perhaps he has suffered from a kind of anxiety disorder, obsessive-compulsive disorder, since the earworm is totally out of control. However, his condition might be misdiagnosed as an auditory hallucination, so the previous doctor tended to treat him with the typical antipsychotic medication, haloperidol. For further understanding of the earworm, let's see what scientists have revealed. This paper pointed out that earworm is a clinical phenomenon that should not be neglected by contemporary obsessive-compulsive disorder researchers. Obsessions and compulsions are the two cardinal features of obsessive-compulsive disorder. The former can lead to the latter. For example, those with hand-washing compulsions are obsessed with a fear of contamination and often wash their hands repeatedly until they are chapped, raw, and sometimes even bleeding. Another salient phenomenon of obsessive-compulsive disorder involves intrusive musical imagery, consisting of recollections of fragments of music. While most people experience intrusive musical imagery, namely earworm in their lives, only a few of them feel aversive. In fact, those who find earworm annoying are suffered from musical obsession, which impairs their quality of life. Research into musical obsession may broaden our understanding of obsessive-compulsive disorder. This study was based on comprehensive reviews of music obsession in 96 cases. It concluded that people should regard music obsessions as true obsessions for the following reasons. First, forms of EMI can be identified that meet all DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for obsessions which means that the obsessional music recurrently and persistently intrudes on patients' minds like true obsessions. Second, musical obsession is unintentional and uncontrollable same as situations occurring in prototypic obsessions. Third, musical obsessions are commonly comorbid with other symptoms of obsessive-compulsive disorder. This review also pointed out that musical obsessions are underdiagnosed and undertreated for a long time, because clinicians may be unfamiliar with them. Regarding the diagnosis and treatment, this paper provided some noteworthy viewpoints. Two patients both suffered from musical obsession, but previously were diagnosed with musical hallucination or schizophrenia with the failed response to their corresponded neuroleptics acting by blocking dopamine receptors. Nevertheless, after changing doctors and treatment strategies as obsessive-compulsive disorder, their symptoms including musical obsessions improved significantly with clomipramine. In conclusion, the differential diagnosis of musical obsession versus hallucination is critical for effective treatment. <laughs>